Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today, we're gonna to be making a special candy. And picture a Butterfinger that meets halva, and it's sort of crumbly and it just melts in your mouth and it's peanutty and peanut butter and crackly. That's what we're making. And it's not hard to make it all. If you've never made candy, I'm gonna walk you through each and every step. So the first thing you need is a heavy duty medium saucepan. All right, we're gonna put this on your, uh, you know, I'm using my hot plate, but you're obviously you're, uh, on your stove. You're gonna have two tablespoons of water, three quarters of a cup of light corn syrup, one cup of granulated sugar, and a tablespoon of butter. And that's gonna be going over here, and then we're gonna use a candy thermometer, and we're gonna get all that mixture to 285 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very high in the candy world. So what we're basically doing is we're cooking the sugar and it's breaking down. Sugar is known as sucrose, granulated sugar. And we're breaking it down and because we have two different types of sugar, corn syrup and granulated sugar, it's really should not crystallize and create any grittiness. So that's a really good thing because only pure substances crystallize. The next thing we have is our main star, peanut butter and peanuts. So I have one and a half cups of smooth peanut butter, uh, and you want a natural peanut butter if you can, and stir it uh, before you pour it in to your bowl. And this should be a heat-proof, microwave-safe bowl. One cup to one and a quarter cups of sort of coarsely chopped peanuts. Now, if you want to use another nut, go ahead. I also have three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm gonna put that all in there. This is all gonna go in the microwave. So it's like everybody's doing their own thing and then we're all coming together. So in the meantime, I have three, uh, half a teaspoon of baking soda and I'm gonna mix this with a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract in a little while because that, that baking soda is actually gonna cause a lot of bubbling in our sugar mixture and aerate it and that's what's gonna give it that crunchy sort of, not super crunch on the teeth, but it's actually gonna give it that melt in your mouth flakiness. And then I have our pan that it's all gonna meet in the end. And this is an eight inch or nine inch square baking pan. You can also use a circular one if you want. I've sprayed it with nonstick cooking spray. I've lined it with aluminum foil and sprayed it again. All right, so we'll be coming back to you momentarily. So I'm gonna pour my one cup of granulated sugar into my medium saucepan, followed by my three quarters of a cup of corn syrup. All right, I'm gonna put two tablespoons of water and you're gonna get this going so it's almost coming to a boil, but you wanna do it slowly because you just don't want it to start burning and getting your sugar uh, all, all, all burnt. And I'm gonna put my tablespoon of butter right in. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start stirring. So I wanna show you what that looks like because you really do not want to stir too much when you make this type of a candy. You will get some crystals on the side of the saucepan, which I will show you in a little while. So I'm stirring very well right now. And then once I let it come to a boil and my sugar has dissolved and my butter has melted, I'm gonna leave the spoon alone. I'm not gonna stir anymore. That's, this is the key to candy making, no stirring. So you stir in the beginning and look what I'm doing. Put the spoon down, Chef Gale. No more spoon. Now what I have here is a pastry brush and some water. And any crystals that I've gotten, I am actually going to brush down with my pastry brush. And that little bit of water that you're introducing will not do any harm to your recipe. So you're just gonna brush down, because I do see a little bit of crystals of sugar that have brushed or washed up to the side. And that happens, and it's not a big deal. 
Now you can see the bubbles are starting, all right? The bubbles are starting, so no more stirring. I'm just gonna watch my temperature. I may have to regulate it a little bit. We're trying to get to 285 degrees Fahrenheit. That's super hot. That is super hot. It's gonna take a little while, all right? So I don't wanna really jiggle my pan too much. I'm just gonna give it a little shimmy shimmy to get it going. But what you're gonna see is sort of puffs of steam coming up and that's the water evaporating. And that's the sugar and the corn syrup getting together and then the sugar will break down. Um, and that's what causes it to, to actually form this candy and a sugar syrup. So it's actually getting super, super bubbly. I'm gonna turn down the temperature just a little. And we want 285, all right, on my candy thermometer. And that's a special thermometer that you have to get just for candy making, okay? So I'll see you back here in about 10 minutes, 8 to 10 minutes or so, okay? And while my sugar syrup is coming to 280 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm taking my peanut butter, peanut, and salt mixture and putting it in the microwave for about maybe a minute to a minute and a half to actually get nice and hot and melted and gooey so we can actually combine the sugar syrup much more easily in with the peanut butter. So I think our sugar syrup is at 280 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm getting rid of my thermometer and my peanut butter is nice and molten and hot. Now I'm gonna take my baking soda and my vanilla extract, and I'm gonna put it together and whisk it up. And this is when the magic happens, folk, folks. This is a lot of magic happening. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna combine this, and you're gonna see some bubbling, okay, when we mix this up. So just be careful when you watch what's happening. It's gonna bubble up a little bit from that Woo, magic. All right, you see that? And you're gonna immediately take it off the heat. You're gonna mix in your beautiful peanut butter. And then things are gonna happen so fast that you gotta go fast, folks, okay? Because fudge and candy don't wait for anybody. So you're gonna take this loveliness and you're gonna mix it up really fast, really fast, something to lick later, and you're just gonna mix it up really fast. See how it's coming together? And you see that puffiness, that airiness, that, that beautiful, okay? And don't worry about mixing it all up together. See it? It's heavy, and there's about 50 million ways you can burn yourself doing this thing. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna run and get a spatula, and you're just gonna spread and smear your lovely, lo and it hardens very quickly, all right? And you're gonna let this cool in here, all right? And it's supposed to look just like this. It almost looks stringy, all right? You know when you open a Butterfinger bar, it almost, it almost looks like shards of uh, glass, uh, but it's just peanut butter loveliness. And you're just gonna let this go. Don't touch it anymore. No touching. And you're gonna let this cool just like this. Um, it usually takes several hours. Do not put it in the refrigerator. Just leave it at room temperature and really resist the urge to snack on it. Now, if you do wanna go over to this, do not touch it now. You will burn your tongue, like, and you will not be able to eat your loveliness. <laughs> so this is a wonderful, wonderful candy, and I'm gonna show you what it, what it looks like when it's cooled down in a little bit. Look at this gorgeous, crunchy peanut butter candy. It's been sitting for several hours. I took it out of the pan, peeled off the foil, you lay it gently down on a cutting surface and then cut into squares or really any shape you want. And not only is it good just on its own, 
You could dip it in chocolate. And what I like to do, you can give it to somebody for Valentine's Day or an I love you little gift. And the other thing I like to do as a baker, because I'm always thinking like a baker, I like to crush it up and use it almost like a praline and put it into buttercreams. You could even mix it into a cake batter or a cookie batter and give a little, you know, je ne sais quoi to uh, all your baked goods. So I hope you become a subscriber. I hope you try to make this incredibly delicious peanut buttery concoction. And until next time.